What's up everybody and welcome to another tutorial. In one of my previous tutorials, I showed you how you can use just PowerPoint to create really cool 2D animated videos just like the one you're seeing right behind me. Now in today's tutorial, we're gonna take this a step further and I'm gonna be showing you how you can use PowerPoint to create 3D animated videos just like what you see around me. So by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create the following video. <laughs> Ooh, pets! Aren't they so adorable, cute, funny, sometimes silly, and even playful? A pet is that missing piece in your home. At Adopt Me, our animals are packed and ready to be part of your family. Visit adoptme.pet to get one today. Everything you just watched right now was created completely using PowerPoint, and you can use some of these 3D tools to create really engaging educational content or just create really cool cover slides to impress your audience like the one you're seeing right now. Really the only limitation you have here is your imagination and I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to replicate the same right after the intro. If you haven't seen the first tutorial, I do recommend you check that out because I'm going to be making a lot of reference to it. So I'm going to put a link to that video in the description of this video and I'm also going to put a link to the source files from this tutorial so you can check them out in case you miss anything and so that you can also use them to follow along. So now let's head into PowerPoint and get started with the tutorial. To access the 3D models, you head over to insert and then there's the option right here for 3D models. You can insert one from your device which you've downloaded or you can also access the stock models that come from within PowerPoint. Under the stock models, they have two categories. They are the animated models, which have some kind of predefined actions in them that are animated. And then you just have your regular steel animations. So if I click in the animal category here and select a steel model, let's say the horse. So this is not an animated one. So that has a 3D model of a horse. And as you can see, if I click and drag around, I can rotate this in 3D space. Also right here at the top, I can also click on different camera angles to switch the view of my model. So let's go ahead and see what the animated models look like. So I'm going to go for animated for education and click on the hat here. Let's say I am a biology teacher trying to teach some biology class about the hat. So you can see I have the hat model right here. And as if you notice carefully, you see that it is animated. You can see the valves moving. And because we're in PowerPoint, I can always add my backgrounds and my other slide text and still rotate the model around when I'm explaining about the hat. All right, let's go ahead and recreate the pet promo from the intro. The very first thing I like to do is add my background to the scene because that helps me figure out where else to place every other thing that I need to put in the scene. And to do that, you just want to right click and go to format background and then click on insert photo. And then I will try the online picture options. And once you're here, you can search for any kind of background that you want and just add the word 3D and PowerPoint will bring 3D images of that uh, search that you just did. Uh, if you notice at the top right here, it says creative comment. So this means that you don't have any copyright issues if you use any of the images here. Of course, you can always uncheck that to get more options to come up here, but you just have to be careful with your copyright uh, for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one of these pictures to the scene. I'll just check back the creative comment. As you can see, it's a 3D image of a pack or what looks like a pack. And if you don't like what PowerPoint has to offer, you can always get your backgrounds from other sources. So which is what I've done for this particular tutorial. I've gone ahead and prepared some backgrounds that we're going to be using. So if I head over to insert and file, I'll select uh, my alternate background of a park. Uh, this looks much better for what I'm trying to do. So now that we have our background for our first scene set up, let's go ahead and add some 3D models. Let me go to insert again, 3D models and then the stock models. And since we're doing a commercial for pets, I'm going to go under the animal category and see what options we have there. So right off the bat, I can see uh, this dog. I like this dog. And then I see another dog right there and they're all animated models because they have the little animation sign right there. So once I have those added to the scene, I'm just gonna scale and rotate them in 3D space to make sure they fit properly within the background. All right, this is looking pretty good. We have our two main primary subject for this particular scene. The next thing I like to do is add a few more elements in the scene to sell that idea that we're in 3D space. So I'm gonna add some foreground uh, to the dogs and also add some few things in the background and a few more elements in the scene. So let's go to insert and let's go to stock models. Uh, let's start by adding some flowers in front of the dogs to give it that sense of depth. Uh, so I'll click right here on this purple one and just click on insert. 
and then just put it right in front of one of our dogs. As you can see, it's creating that depth uh, between the camera, the front view camera and the dog itself. So next, since it's an outdoor park, uh, we should probably have some animals, like maybe birds around. So let's go under stock and then let's go under animated animals. And I see right here, we have a model of a bird. So I'm gonna put that right into the scene and then scale and rotate it in 3D space uh, to match properly. So I'm gonna put it outside the slide or scene uh, because we're going to animate it to fly across. So once I have that set, uh, the next thing I wanna do is probably these pets should have an owner because they're not probably just hanging out in the park alone. So uh, PowerPoint doesn't have much images of humans. So we're gonna go now to a website. Um, one I like to go to is called Free3D and you can find a lot of 3D models here for free. So I'm gonna search one for an animated human. And as you can see, we have several. Uh, let's go with this animated dancer. Uh, he's gonna be our pet owners. So as you can see, it's free and I'm just gonna download it. So one thing I noticed is that the FBX format works well with PowerPoint. It keeps the animations and the textures. Some other formats that I tried didn't work properly. So that's just something for you to note. All right, so I have that downloaded. Again, I'm gonna go back to insert. And then now this time around, I'm gonna do insert from this device. And uh, as you can see right here at the bottom, these are all the different formats that PowerPoint uh, accepts. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert our model. So you see it comes with all the textures with the model and also the animation that he has is already within uh, the model. So I'm just gonna place that properly within the scene and right click and move him to the back so that he's behind the dock. So as you can see, our scene is already looking pretty good. We have some, some elements in the foreground. We have a few things in the background. If you put this all together, it really sells that shot of a 3D scene. All right, at this point, if you're enjoying this video, I ask you to do me one simple favor, which is simply hit that like button. It goes a long way in helping me grow this channel and it will really mean a lot to me. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel and you wanna see more content like this, I welcome you to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below and also turning on your notifications so you get notified next time I release videos. I mean, it's approved by the cute dogs. What else can I say? All right, next we move to one of my favorite parts of all of this, which is bringing your models to life using animations. And I'm gonna show you two ways you can do this using PowerPoint. So the first is by using your typical animations that come with PowerPoint, like we covered in the first video. So for example, fly in, uh, grow and turn would make it grow and turn. So you can use all of those animations like you would any other object. And then there are specific ones that are geared towards 3D and you'll see them here marked in something that looks like a cube. And for example, the turnable one makes the model orbit around 3D space turning in 360. The second way you can animate your models is with something called scenes. And these are predefined actions that have been programmed into this object or these models when they were being created. So for example, when I click on scene two, you see the cat does that meow sound. When I click on scene three, it's doing another action. And each model will have specific actions that are geared towards that model. So just play around with those and see what works for your scene. All right, so let's head back to our project. For the very first dog, I think I'm gonna use scene two to just kind of have it curious and scratching its face. I'm also gonna go ahead and click on the second dog and find uh, a nice animation for it, like this one here, where it's uh, sort of picking on something. And because we have it uh, picking on something, it might make sense to add one more object here to show what it's curious about. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a 3D model of a uh, insect, probably a butterfly. I can see a dog getting curious about a butterfly. So like we've done before, I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this and just place it properly within the 3D space so it looks like the dog is touching it and that looks good to me. For our bird, we're gonna leave its animation on scene one, but we're gonna go ahead and add one more animation. So I'm gonna go right here to the animation tab, click on add animation, and then I'm gonna add a motion path and we're gonna use this to make it fly across the screen. With your motion path, you have a green and a red dot. So the green is where the animation starts and the red is where it stops. So if I click and drag on the red dot and just drop it somewhere across the other side of the screen, this will make it fly across. So let's play that and see what it looks like. There you go. That's happening a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna click on the animation, the motion path and change the duration to five seconds to slow it down. And then I'm also gonna just click right here on the side and say start with the previous and do the same for the one on the top so that all the animations start at once, once the scene is loaded. So let's go ahead and play this and see what this looks like. All 
right, so this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to leave this scene the way it is. And then we're going to go ahead and create the additional scenes that we need for the rest of this promo. So I'm going to right click and do create new slide, add a background like we did before. And then once I've done that, I'll just go to my first slide and copy uh, the 3D model of the dog, one of these dogs, and I'll duplicate that, uh, copy and paste that, and then just replicate the exact same thing. And then this time around for my foreground, I'll be getting our 3D models from a different site. It's called CG Traders. They also have uh, free 3D models that you can download as well as paid ones. So I'm going to get this model of a tree and bring it into our scene. For our final scene, we'll do something different. We'll use a gradient background. To do this, you want to go right there to the format background and click on gradient fill. And you can always uh, change the colors by just double clicking on any of the colors and selecting what you want. But in our case, I'll revert that back to the blue. The blue looks good to me. All right, next we're going to add some call to action uh, for our final scene to put the website where users can go to. And for this, I'm just going to go to insert. And then I'm going to insert a text box and just click right in my scene and type the website www.adoptme.pet, which is not a real website. I just made that up. So I've just simply also chosen some nice fonts for our text and changed the color to white. Then I'm going to click and drag in a logo that I've put together for this fake organization into the slide and just place it properly within the set. And then finally, we're going to add our cat model into the set. And then for its animation, I'm going to choose scene six where we have the cat typing. That seems to work well with this. Next, we're going to add a typing animation to our text. So it rhymes a little bit better with the kitty typing. To do this is quite simple. Just make sure the text is selected. Then head over to the animation tab and then select on the appear entrance effect. Now the entire text is going to appear, but that's not a problem. We're going to fix that. To do this, head onto the animation pane and then click on the text itself. And then you want to go to effect options. And right here where it says animate text all at once, you want to change that to by letter and then just change the delay to about probably two seconds and click on OK and voila you have a typing effect right there. All right, this is looking pretty good. We have two more things to take care of before we can actually complete this promo. The first are the transitions between the scenes. And for the transitions, I cover this extensively in my previous video. So I'm not gonna go much into that. My only one tip is that uh, when doing 3D uh, animations, I like to keep my transitions very simple. So a very hard cut or, or, or a simple fade. So for this particular one, the only one place that I'm gonna put the transition is when we're going from the airport into the final call to action. And I think the airplane transition effect is an interesting one that fits in here and looks pretty good. So I'm going to use that. All right. So the final thing we need to do is add the cherry and the cake. And I'm talking about adding sound design to this. And I showed you a lot of techniques you can use to do this in the first video. And in that video, I showed you how you can also record your voiceover. But in this case, I already have my voiceover mixed uh, with the background music. So I'm just going to go ahead and import it into the video. And to do that, you want to click on audio and then audio from my PC. And then I'm just going to select that audio and I'm going to play it for you to hear what it sounds like. Ooh, pets. Aren't they so adorable, cute, funny, sometimes silly, and even playful? So I'll select play in background as the style for this audio because I want it to play as a background music. And then I'm going to remove loop until stopped because it has a voiceover I want it to play just once. So the next thing we need to do is to figure out how to make sure that our slides are in sync with the voiceover. So when the voiceover gets to certain point, we want to make sure the right slide is showing on the screen. And there's several ways to do this, but the way that I like to do it is to have certain keywords that mark the beginning of the next scene. And then all I have to do is just play back the voiceover and find the timestamp at which that word is said. For example, in this particular uh, uh, demo that we're doing, I want the slides to move to the next slide when she says sometimes silly. So I'm going to go over to the voiceover and play it and listen to where she says sometimes silly. Pets. Aren't they so adorable, cute, funny, sometimes silly? Okay, I can see that that happens in about five seconds. So I'm going to take note of that timestamp. Next, if you head over to the animations pane, you're going to see what looks like a timeline. And that's what's here in yellow. So if I just click and expand this so you can see this a little bit better. If you don't see this on your PowerPoint, just right click on any of the animation sequence and then click on show advanced timeline. 
And at the bottom of it, you can see the time markers in seconds showing you how long this particular each sequence takes. So what you want to do is just make sure that um, the sequence is not longer than the five seconds that we have. So if I click on one of the animations here, I can see it takes 59 seconds by looking at the duration on the top there. And if I click on the next one at the bottom, I see it takes about five seconds to complete. So what you want to do is just reduce everything there to start uh, to not be more than the five seconds. So to do that, you just go to the edge of it and wait for your cursor to change to this sort of a crosshair and then click and then drag it back. You can drag it to shorten its time or drag it forward to extend its time. So I'm just going to drag and extend, uh, shorten all of them to be about five seconds. This way we now have our entire timeline finishing at about five seconds. So this should now transition to the next slide after about five seconds being in sync with our voice over. So the only one issue you might notice is that when we play this back, our dancing guy now looks like he's high on some kind of steroids. <laughs> and this is happening because his original dance sequence animation was programmed to take about 59 seconds to complete and we've basically shrunk it down to about five seconds so which is making it happen too fast my two recommendations for this is that if you know you have a scene that is very short then don't use models that have very long animations uh, the other second thing you could do is export everything from powerpoint don't trim it the way i just showed you how to do and then use a video editing software to align it properly with your voice over and there are a bunch of free video editing softwares out there. I actually have a video on this. I'm going to put the link to that video in the description. You can check some of these out. So the final step here is to go ahead and add other ambient noise to our animations. And I covered this extensively in my previous video. So I'm not going to go too much into depth in this particular video. But as a recap, if you right click on any of the animations here on your animation pane and click on effect options, you then have the option to add a sound that plays with that animation. And PowerPoint already have some predefined sounds that come with it. And if you don't have the sound that you like there, you can always click on other to upload a sound from your computer. Like in this case, I'm going to upload the meowing sound. And whenever I play this animation, you can hear that the meowing sounds play. And that is it, everyone. We're done with our animation. If you're going to be using this as a video, you just go to files, export, and then click on create video. And then you have the option to choose your resolution and just click on create video to export this out as a video and then you can show that to the whole world all right that's all i had for you today as you can see using only powerpoint you can create really 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 amazing looking 3d animations Although if you do plan to do this on a regular basis or you plan to do this professionally, I would recommend you check out a couple more softwares that are designed specifically for something like this. And one that I would recommend is a software called Create Studio. In fact, the backgrounds that we used in this PowerPoint tutorial was generated using Create Studio and it might give you a lot more assets that you can use when you're putting your animations together. I have a video I did on Create Studio. I'm going to put a link to that video down in the description. I recommend that you check that out and see if it's something that might be of interest to you. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and smash that like button. And if you want to get see more tutorials from me, I welcome you to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next video. Keep learning. Bye.